Don't worry, the moment you become born again, there's a purpose. And there will always be something to come and interfere. Make sure that you are watchful and alert. He will go to the cross, they will think that they are crucifying him, and yet he's opening the gate for everybody to enter and see the glory. Don't say ever think what is unknown, it's only a tongue. The writing. The sickness, the laying on of hands, the casting out demons, everything becoming strange. And it causes people to wonder, say, I wonder if it's real. This must be witchcraft. Trees will clap their hands. Trees will clap their hands. Africa. Jesus is great. He's wonderful. Do you love our Father? But what I'm saying is, we know the prophecy. We don't lose focus. I still say heaven and earth will pass, but the word shall remain. What was spoken on the first this month will still remain. But still a mystery to many people. Still a mystery. It's still a mystery because everybody wants an answer. But it will never change the you situation. Because it's full of many questions. So, I'm saying God is here to bless us all. God is here. I don't want the next generation to experience a bad thing. A bad thing, I mean, God coming to the next generation and said, Leseho stopped this because of the people. So, I'm giving it to you. So let God come to the next generation and say it. Leseo was brave enough. He was not shaken. Even when people were saying this, he was not shaken. I want you to continue. I want you to move on with it. Do we love Jesus Christ? So I'm saying we are here. God is here to bless us. God is here to bless us. And when God blesses us, God cannot bless us and just remain in a closet. God comes out so that you can see him. God says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty ways. Things you do not know. The problem is we are the body of Christ. We are praying, we are calling. But why do we call for what we know? We expect God to reveal what we know. But God says, I will show you great and mighty works. Things that you do not know. I want you to listen to this. We are still continuing with the message. He says in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, 
call unto me and I will show you great and mighty works. Things that are fenced, things that are hidden, things you yourself do not know. You don't know them. We pray, these things are usual. We pray for what we know. You pray for a job. You pray for a wife. Don't you know a wife? You pray for a husband. Don't you know a husband? We know them. But God says, I will reward you and show you things that you never knew. You sleep together as a husband and a wife. You, 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 you come together for what you know. A baby. Until a woman begins to have funny feelings or change in her body. Then she says, let's go to the doctor. And when you have the doctor, you say, my wife is sick. She's not okay. And the doctor begins to examine the woman. And he is the one who comes with the report. Your wife is pregnant. And all of you become, oh! and the doctor will say, no, this is not you. Don't worry. The doctor will say, why you say, oh, what were you doing all along? You know what you were doing. That's what you know. That's what you know. That's what you know. That's what you know. I want somebody. We are going somewhere now. You'll understand. It. We are going somewhere. But there's this woman called Mary. There's this woman called Mary. She never met with a husband. She never met with a... This is the thing of God can raise worshippers out of the stone. Out of the stones, God can. You don't expect worshippers from the stones. You know a stone to be a stone. It cannot give birth to worshippers. You know Mary to be a virgin. But she can never give birth to a child. And there are these women, when they become pregnant, they feel nothing. And the stomach does not grow. The stomach does not grow. They feel normal. Even when they give birth, they will realize when they give birth that they were pregnant. I'm explaining something today. Even when they give birth, they will give birth without knowing that they are pregnant. These are the times that you are speaking about today. When nobody knows, when somebody did not expect, when you expect, when you expect, you expect what you know. And the end of it will be called nine months. But what we are talking about today is the unexpected end. The unexpected end. You don't know even if you are expecting. But the end shall come even when you do not expect. When if you do not expect it. That's why he says, call unto me. You've been calling. But what will come? You don't see your tummy growing. You don't see yourself going jiggy jiggy. You don't see yourself falling down. You don't see yourself. But the end, the end shall be unexpected. end shall be unexpected because you don't actually see the signs because what is happening now may look as bad to others this looks like it cannot produce anything good ah, it looks like it cannot produce anything good because you called remember you called what is happening now it's not the result of my prayer only <laughs> It's not the result of my prayer only. Some people were calling. Some churches have been praying. But they were praying for what they know. But God brought what they did not know. So I brought the body. Because the body of Christ has been normal. 
because the boot of dress has been so normal. The tummy was not big. There was no vomiting in the morning. There was no urine coming out. Everything has been normal. Let's explain Jeremiah 33. Everything has been normal in the body. Because you did not expect the body to... Everything has been normal. Because many quote the scriptures, but they don't get the scriptures. They don't get the context. Because there, God says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. God says, I will show you. It means there's no change in your body to show that something is coming. Because what comes is a thing that you do not know. So we're talking about the woman today who would not be even like Mary. A woman who does not see change in the body. This is the church. That's why I say this is not the, I'm saying this is not the result of my prayer. Only. It's a prayer of the body itself. Why do the body pray for miracles, for signs? Father, bring it. Father, bring it. Father. But when it comes because this body never experienced change. They were not going to the toilet time and again. They were not vomiting in the morning. The body was not growing. The body has been normal. The body has just been normal. Because God wants to show you what you do not know. You see, people depend on feelings. The way I feel, it's like I am pregnant. The way I do things in the morning, it shows it's a sign that I am pregnant. Even when you don't expect it to come, it will come. It can be an inferior township. It can be an inferior boy in Africa because you've been praying all over the world as the body, as the body of Christ. But God will reveal it where you never expect it to happen. He says, call unto me. The body calls. The body of Christ prays. But the way they pray, they don't know. But God downloads while they don't feel anything. Come on, just, just read it. Just read it. Just read it. Because we, we, we keep on playing with the scripture. This is not a scripture to play with. This is not something to play with. This is not something to pray with. That's why I'm saying you, you, they, they made a mistake by praying as the body. Now they stand, they speak against what they prayed for. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know if somebody gets the statement. They have been praying. Now they speak against what they prayed for. Somebody has been praying for a miracle. Somebody has been praying for signs. Somebody is praying for answers. But God has answered. Why do you blame God? Leave this you alone. Go to God. We are here. This is training of the matters of the kingdom. We are starting today. Tomorrow, Sunday. I want you to get this. Many ministers of God, you are here. In and out of the country, you are here. I want to help you one thing. Go and read the Bible and teach your people. Don't read any newspaper and go and teach in your church. It is God who gave us the book of books to teach us his word. Many, even last week, they heard from the newspapers they preached in the churches. They were teaching in the churches. You missed God's revelation that day. You missed God's revelation. Instead of talking about Christ, you talk about the silver. Many had beautiful topics last week. 
But I want to counsel you as leaders here. I want to help as leaders. Go read the Bible. Ask God's word to come into your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, not out of the abundance of a magazine, not out of the abundance of a, of a newspaper, not out of the abundance of news, but out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth shall speak. So God began to speak to me that this body has been calling. He has been praying unto me. Bring what we see. We no longer see what we see in the Bible. We no longer see this. They've been praying. But God has answered. God has answered. God has answered every member of his body. It might be the leg. It might be the head. It might be the hands. God answered for everybody. This church as we must go into the word and begin to teach what is from above. Because even those who do communications, you know, when news comes from the first person to the next person, the third person, we call it distortion. There's a barrier because it's not like the first. It's not the original. So come to the original. I cannot go anywhere. Come to the original. Come to the original. So don't go to the third one and begin to reveal it to your people. You see, there are many teachers. There are many instructors. But there are few fathers. There are many who teach. There are many who instruct. They are instructors. Beware of being an instructor. Beware of being an instructor. Let God take you to being a father. You see, a father can even bring up a son, even when a son comes up with strange things, but a father can explain what is in the son. The father can look at the son and be says, Timothy, my son in the Lord. I'm sending you Timothy. My son in the Lord. You see, this is First Corinthians chapter 4. When Paul begins to explain that, he says, I'm sending my son in the Lord. He is a father to them. When he's the father, he says, there are many instructors. We love First Corinthians 4. You get it why I'm saying this. There are many teachers, many instructors, but a few fathers. Instructors. The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk. Instructors. It's not a matter of talk, instructors. It's not a matter of talk, instructors. But it's of power. The Father. God is spirit. God is spirit. Come on, I want to get it. Because we like quoting. The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but it's a matter of power. It's a, not a matter of being an instructor. But it's a, it's a matter of being a father. Matthew 22. <sighs> Many are called. Many instructors. Many teachers. But few are chosen. Fathers. 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 You see, the father is able to explain. That's why Matthew 10 it says, a, a, a student is not better than his teacher. But it is not for a student to be like the teacher. That's a father who's able to make a student to be like him. You see, when we come to such spirit, we are able to understand what is happening with the body. When everybody sees nothing on the body, but there's somebody who comes and God reveals unto him. This is what is happening in the body. You don't expect anything. You, whenever you expect, you, are, you pray, you want to see the body growing, becoming pregnant. And we say, you are expecting. It's because we know. We say, you are expecting. It's because we know. We know what you have done before. We know everything. 
we know how it happened. But God says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. Things that are hidden, things that are fenced, things that you don't even know. Things that you do not know. Is somebody getting it? Are, are we getting it? Are we getting it? Are we going somewhere? Because this is what is happening with the body. This is the body of Christ. You pray just like people who would say this anointing is not of God, yet it's in them. <laughs> one Lord, one body, one spirit, one father. One father of all. That's 1 Corinthians 12. I mean, we must get it. 1 Corinthians 12. That's why 1 Corinthians 12, it quotes all the gifts. I mean, it quotes all the gifts. All the gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 are for children. Are we all apostles? Are we all teachers? Do you all speak in tongues? Do you all prophesy? Do you all... After that, Paul says, be eager for greater. It means they are less. Be eager for greater gifts. When you go to chapter 13, he said, let me show you the most excellent way. It means let me show you the most holy place, the most sacred place, the most excellent ministry. He says, let me show you the most excellent way. If you do it without love, we don't see the Father's spirit. So we pray for what we expect. I need the gift of this. I need the gift of that. I need the gift of this. I need the gift of that. Why don't you pray for the Father to live in us? Because if the Father lives in you, anything can happen. Anything, anytime can happen. Anything, anytime can happen. I have to teach you and counsel you. That's why I'm saying we have to operate with love. What I'm saying is, Let's go to the source. If you go to the source, you'll be like a fountain that brings only sweet waters. Let me teach you one thing. We face persecutions. We face trials. We are tested. Temptation comes. A lot of things come. But let me show you a minister of God. A minister of God does not experience same temptations, trials, tests, temptations, uh, persecutions, same ones every year. No, they grow. They grow. Why do we say the anointing grows? It grows for what? To deal with the same many things? No. As the anointing grows, this must grow as well. Why? They must grow. Next year's persecution will not be like this year. And I'm still praying. Father, I'm bored. Somebody must talk about me every day. Somebody must say something about me every day. Somebody must say something. I know the secret of being weak. Because when I'm weak, I'm strong. And God's strength is made perfect. We need God's strength that is perfect. And God's strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. That's what I'm saying. You must understand. We pray, but when it comes, we complain. Persecution that you do not know must come. Test that you do not know must come. Trials that you do not know must come. Temptations that you do not know must come. Why did you call? You call and you expect what is nice all the time? Somebody called, somebody prayed, and God has answered. And not only with what you do not know, with trials that you don't know, with tests that you do not know, temptations that you do not know. I believe somebody's getting it now. Somebody's getting it right now. As a man or as a woman of God, you must not experience the same thing. And if you passed that one, we will see with a new one. Amen. How do we see that you passed that one? 
So some things will begin to happen to look as if nothing good will come out. It's because the body is still normal. It's because the body is still normal. The body is flat. I'm amazed and perplexed because we read books of generals where we see great women and men of God praying and in the coming crusades, people just stand like this for three days. We saw how they were persecuted. We saw how they spoke about Now God has brought a new thing now. This one is worse. We, we prayed. You must understand the scripture. We prayed. But look at the body. What do you see on the body? What do you see on the body? You see the body vomiting? Do you see the body going to toilet time and again? Do you see the body, you know, growing? The stomach become big? The body is just normal. And we talk about the unexpected end. Because when we see that you are expecting, it will become too common to us. We have knowledge. And you must see when it happens. When we know that this woman is pregnant, we begin to go and get the pregnant vids. We get the relevant diet. We get everything. God wants to show you that without the diet, without that medication, God has been taking care of the body. God has been providing. God has been taking care of what he's bringing out. Many expect, and when they expect, we begin to run and even prepare ourselves. And even buy clothes. And even check the sex, whether it's a boy or a girl. But this one, God doesn't want to show anything. God doesn't want to show anything. God shows the body as it is. Because we've been calling. Come on, read, read verse 3. Read verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Call to me and I will do what? Don't you want an answer? What do you want? An answer? Don't you want the answer? You want the answer. You want what? You want the answer. And God is answering. That's what I'm saying. This is prophetic. But for very this part I'm saying, I'm saying you haven't seen anything. The unexpected end. Because somewhere it may look like nothing good is coming out. Because if you are still expecting everybody, it becomes too common. It becomes too common. A thing has happened right now. Everybody is just standing. Everybody is just talking. But you don't know the end. You don't know the end. Let God be the judge of all. Leave judgment for God. Because some of you have already declared and you prayed for miracles, for signs, for wonders. But you prayed. You see your answer and you talk against your answer. Wisdom is from above. Wisdom is from above. It's not from men. Jesus has become our wisdom from God. Repeat it. Just go. Verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. And show you great and? Great and? Great and mighty? Uh-huh. Fenced in and hidden. Fenced in and? And hidden? Yeah, fenced in and? And hidden, yes. Which you did not know. Which you did not. Which you did not. No. You understand this? Many people read this scripture, but they don't take this part. Which you did not know. Which you did not know. Which you did not know. Because if you know, you're going to get 
earthly things to provide for this. But God wants to show you that I can do it. This is power that can make it without any help. Because David says, bring back the ark. When they bring back the ark, somebody tries to help. When it falls, somebody dies. Bring it back. When it comes back, somebody tries to When he helps, he dies. Listen. God doesn't want anybody to help. Bring back the ark. When they bring back the ark, you know, the ark wanted to fall because it came on a cart. When it tried to fall, the man tried to help and he died. And he died. Now begin to understand. People will ask themselves who fathered him. Who helped him? Who helped him? Who helped him? Who brought him up? Where did he go to Bible school? Because God didn't want you to realize. Some of the things they begin to come and they begin to appreciate how I grew up. How I suffered. How I went through everything. God didn't want people to know. It is difficult to get gold. You have to see raw thing, rock. God doesn't want you to know. Because I will show you great and mighty things. Things that are fenced, things that are hidden. Things that you do not know. Let's go and pray. And ask. And when we ask, let's say, God, whatever. Because yes, whatever you ask in my name shall be given unto you. Even to him we say, whatever you give. Because we, 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 we pray and we ask for what we know. We ask for what we know. And that's where we go wrong. That's where we go wrong. We ask for what we know. God says, I will show you great amount of things. Things that you do not know. Things that you do not know. So I love you, Jesus. So I love you, Jesus. So I love you, Jesus. Trials that you do not know. Temptations that you do not know. Persecutions that you do not know. How do you overcome? Because to them that overcome, we'll touch it more. You must get it. To them that overcome, I will give them the hidden manna. I will give them the hidden manna. That's why when God gave the manna, he says, I'll give you the manna that even your forefathers know nothing about. So he says, I'll give you the hidden manna. Are we ready? Somebody's not getting it. I will give you the hidden manna. And moreover, I will even give you the name that no one knows. The name that no one knows except the one who receives it. I will go deeper next time. We'll go deeper next time. You must get it. You don't know it. Do you know it? But God will give you a new name. That no one knows. Well, explain deeper. No one knows it except the one who receives it. So the one who receives it is the only one to explain it. Because this name will produce. This name will keep on producing things that will never know. This name is not just a name. But it will produce things. Because every name has got a meaning. Every name has got a meaning. But he says, I'll give you a name that no one knows. Except the one who receives it. Oh, be ready to receive what no one knows. Be ready to get what no one knows. Because you have been calling. 
You will be called. He says, I'll give you a new name. That's Revelations chapter 2, verse 17, 18. You go from verse 17. Let those who have yes, listened to what the Spirit is saying to the churches, those who overcome, I will give them the hidden manna. And even a new name. You get it? I will give him the hidden manna, a white stone. A white stone with a name written on it. With a name written on it. The name that no one knows. Except the one who receives it. No one knows this name. No one knows this name. Except the one who receives it. So the one who receives it becomes a master in that field. Nobody can come in that field. You receive what no one knows. No one can come to the Father. No one can come to me. If he says no one can come to me, unless the Father has enabled him. No one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him to do so. So you see, it will take the Father it's not an instructor. <laughs> Love the weight. As a man and a woman of God, go and teach your people the weight. When anything happens, there's no need for you to explain to people. Even your Sunday school will say, no, 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 wait, let me explain. So the father relaxes. So the father can relax. Because the son does what the father is doing. The son does what the father is doing. Because the father reveals everything to the son. You are doing what your father is doing. I am doing what I've seen in my father's presence. Because the father reveals to the son. The father shows everything to the son. The son can only do what he sees the father doing. So there are many instructors, many teachers, but there are few fathers. So no one can come to me unless the father enables him to do so. No one can understand what is happening in me unless God enables him to. No one. Come on, this is scripture that we know. This is John 6 that I'm quoting. From verse 21, they left him because this is a hard teaching who can... I mean, you can't understand. You can't. It's difficult. It's because the father has not enabled him to come close. Yet they were healing the sick. Yet they were casting out demons. This is the 72 disciples. Because he sent them out. They were his disciples. And they end up by saying, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Who can accept this teaching? It's a hard one. They grumbled and they left him. It's because they were never, in, <laughs> they were never allowed to come close. You see, if you come close, you'll understand. What does it mean? Listen. When he says he has descended. The same one who has descended is the same one who has ascended. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4. What does it mean when it says he has descended? The one who has descended is the same one who has ascended. So when he says, don't listen to him and say, yeah, I go to the Father. He has descended. He has come here. He lowered himself. He humbled himself. And when you look at him, he took a form of a servant. Though in every form he was God, but he stripped himself of his royal dignified coat, he put it aside and became a servant. He took a form of a servant, so he descended. He lowered himself. He humbled himself. So by humbling himself, the same one who has descended is the same one who has ascended. He is the same one who has ascended. So they left him 
on account of his teaching. Then he says, no one can come to me unless the father has enabled him to do so. Go for fathers. There are too many instructors. There are too many teachers. Many can cook the Bible. But not everybody accepts the unknown. No matter how the Bible is quoted. But they give him even a proof. Second or third book without the first one. Come to the original. When you come to the original, the father enables you to come closer. That's why he says, no one can come to me unless the father has enabled him to do so. So he says to Peter, you want to go as well? Peter says, there's no way we can go. Where can we go? Where can we? If I look, no way. There's no way. There are many instructors. Ah, look, look, look. He, he says, do you want to go, Peter? Well, Peter says, where can we go? There are many who have been teaching. There are many instructors. There's no way. You have the weight of life. There's no way we can go. You have the weight of life. Nicodemus comes, teacher. You show that you are from above. For no one can do the signs, the miracles that you are doing. No one. You show that you are from above. You are from above. No one can do. So you are more than all the instructors. Then he says, you must be born again. You must be born again. Look, we go to the basics and still people don't understand the basics. It's because people get the basics. They get born again and when they finish, they throw it aside. Being born again is to carry the kingdom of God in you. And when you carry the kingdom of God to you, whatever you go, whatever, whatever you do, the kingdom manifests. And when the kingdom manifests, it shows that you are from above. Because what you carry is the kingdom of is the kingdom of because it says the kingdom of God is within you. Those who are born of water and spirit, they enter into the kingdom. So when the kingdom manifests, people get amazed. Seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first what? The kingdom. And its righteousness. And all shall be added. And when they are added, they don't edit, they are not getting added ordinarily. Not ordinarily. They will fight. Because they are added unto you. You earn the same salary with them. But your salary does things that are greater. Because you ask for greater things. You ask for greater things. If you ask for greater things, you've been working with them, you earn the same salary. Some of your bosses, they earn more salaries than you. But you buy a better car than your boss because you, yours is added supernaturally. And what's next? A persecution. Which you never knew. A trial you never knew. A temptation you never knew. Because you bought something that it makes it look like it's impossible for you to get it. According to your salary, you can't. Because they expect what they know according to your salary. Because they expect what they know. God wants to bring out things where people never expect the great to come out. You see, we pray, but we want the common. We want what we know. That's why I'm saying I'm convinced. No one can explain this. People may try to sit with me and say this and say, but at the end, they put this aside. They focus on another thing. Because this is just too much. This is just too much. This is just too much. Because I ask simple questions. Because even Jesus in John chapter 3 was showing simple things. Simple, simple questions. I mean, Jesus was just saying, I show you earthly things. The wind blows where it blows. No one knows where it comes from. No one knows. It's an earthly thing. Then it's an earthly thing, but it's difficult still. 
The wind blows where it dwells. You don't know where it comes from. You don't know where it's going. It's an earthly thing, you know. But do you know where it comes from? It's an earthly thing. It's an earthly thing. You know about it. But it's difficult the way he puts it. <laughs> but it's difficult because it blows. Do you know where it comes from? He says, how much more when I talk about spiritual things? How much more if I speak about heavenly things? It will be too much for you. It will be too much for you. You will not sleep. So he tries to come to their level, but it's still difficult. Flesh gives best to flesh. Yes, it gives best to flesh. That's what you expect, you know. But spirit gives birth to spirit. And when the spirit gives birth to spirit, you will not expect something that you know. Because it's spirit that gives birth to spirit. Spirit gives birth to spirit. But flesh gives birth to flesh. You know. It's common. But when you give earthly examples, it's still what you know, but the way you explain it is still difficult. If the wind blows now, when I tell you, tell me where it comes from, you know about the wind. But you can't say. A man who's born again is like the wind. No one knows where he comes from. No one knows where he comes from. I will give you a stone with a new name written on it. The name that no one knows except the one who receives it. A man who is born again he's like the wind. No one knows where he comes from. No one knows where he's going. You don't know where I'm going. That's why I call this message the unexpected end because you don't know where I'm going. You don't know where the church is going. You don't know where the body is going because the body never shown any sign to show that it's pregnant. Yet you called. Yet you called. You prayed. You gave each other, you know, prayer requests. Pray for a miracle in my church. Pray for a miracle in the body of Christ. Pray for things to happen. Signs must happen in the body. All the churches must experience this. But when it happens, let's get the message. Because every day I meditate and God begins to give me revelations. Now understand that this is prophetic now. Because we expect what we know. It becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. When Jesus turned water into wine. You can you imagine how it happened? How, how it has been the time? But today, just tell me, just tell me, I take a rod and I go to a rock and I point it and water comes out. I will still be in trouble. But they love Moses, which they read about. They were never there. They've never seen him. They don't know how Moses looks like. But you know how I look like? You know the rod? I took it from the jungle. I went to the rod that you know. I pointed it. Water comes out. Now you blame me. I will still be in trouble. You see, in, in, in this life, you'll be in trouble. When... <laughs> I mean, anything that you do, you'll be in trouble. You'll be in trouble. Just imagine if I take a rod now, I come with it, and you say, hey, he's going to show an example. We're going to see illustrations. We're going to see illustrations because we have come to a seminar. <laughs> but all of a sudden, I spin it, I throw it on. Then you see a python. Shh, I'm going to be alone in this church because I'm going to be named triple six, a man with horns, a man with whatever. But yet you approve Moses whom you do not know. approve a Moses that you don't even know. You were not even born. You were not even there. He's not even your cousin. He's not even your uncle. He's not even your papa. He's not even your grandfather. He's far. And yet you must understand one thing. Before Moses, you were there. Because you were chosen. There are many who are called, but few are chosen. Many instructors, but few fathers. Before 
you were chosen in Christ from before the beginning of the foundations of the earth. So before everything that was, you were there. So you, you can produce anything because God began to produce before the earth. Let there be light. Let there be the feminine. Let there be this. Let there, so when you are chosen before ever, you have this spirit that can do anything. I believe somebody's going somewhere. Yeah. I believe somebody's going somewhere. Yeah. Just imagine, I just come with the rod and it becomes a python. And I'm just saying something like a python. A python is not poisonous. <laughs> a poison. You know, a python. It's still poisonous. And you'll all run out. At least let you catch one and eat. You don't eat everybody. <laughs> but what will they say tomorrow about me? What will the social network say about me? But you read about it. The problem is people read about these things. And after they read, they prayed. They prayed. Father, let me be like him. Let me be like Moses. <laughs> let me be like Moses. Even you, you, you must imagine. You, look what Moses did. Look at the burning bush. You know, Moses comes in the, the burning bush and the God says, take off your shoes. This place is holy. Then he comes closer. <laughs> Put your hand in your coat. Put out. Ah, you can't run away from it. It's already on your hand. Put it back. Okay. What do you have? A staff, a rod. Throw it. Do you, do you know the action? What happened? You must read correctly. The Bible says after I threw it down, it became a snake. He, he ran away from his own. He ran away from his own staff. God said, God made it simple. Catch it by the tail, at least. The tail. Because the head. <laughs> because the head. So he had to catch the tail and it became, okay, it is tough again. You run away from your own and your own you do not know. Your own you do not understand. Your own. Because you know that it's normal. Did we see any sign in the rod that it has got something inside? Did you see pregnancy? Did you see the vomiting? Did you see going to the toilet time and again? Did you see a woman begin to change, you know, and walk differently? Did you see a changing way? It's still the road. Yet many have been calling. Many have been praying, but they run away from their own. They run away from their own. They reject their own. Yet they prayed. You must three quarters they ran away. He ran away at the burning bush. But yet it was his own rod. And he ran away. You have been praying too much. You have been praying a lot. You have been asking a lot. But gone are the days now we have to run away from our own. Because this is your name. And no one knows. No one knows. Except the one who receives it. I will cause you to see great and mighty things. Things, things, things hidden. Things that you do not know. You pray, you run, many run away from their prayer. Many run away from their prayer. They've been praying, but today they run away for what they prayed for. You said you want to be like Jeremiah. You said you want to be like Ezekiel. You said you want to be like Peter. You said you want to be like Paul. But when things manifest, you run away from your own. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3, this is that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might be shown, might be revealed. Things that are unsearchable, things that cannot be calculated, things, mysteries. And yet you said, you want to be like Paul. 
You even changed your name to Paul. You, your name used to be Abraham. And you say, I want to be Abraham. But yet the promise was given to Abraham. And you reject the promise. 